or in hotels. However, after the French Revolution, at the end of the 18th century, many of these aristocrats took a trip to the guillotine. Before Escoffier, being a chef was not a very attractive job. You were still a servant, the kitchens were hot, and it was pretty dangerous. And for diners, the few restaurants that existed were chaotic. Food would be inconsistent, and dishes would come out in a very haphazard order. Escoffier had been learning the business since he was 13, and after a seven-year stretch in the army, he opened his own restaurant in Cannes. But it was in 1884, when he moved to Monte Carlo, that he began to change the industry forever. He ran the kitchen for the new Grand Hotel, owned by legendary hotelier Caesar Ritz. Here, Escoffier introduced the Brigade system. This is where all the chef names come from. Chef de partie, who's in charge of the pastry, saucier, who does the sauces, commis, a line cook who's often a young chef learning each station. By splitting it up this way, like a manufacturing plant, it was possible to know how long each dish took and the chefs on that section would be focused on just a few steps so they could perfect the process and be consistent. Escoffier also introduced the hat and scarf to keep sweat out of the food as well as banning smoking and drinking that were pretty common in kitchens at the time. His greatest impact was not in Paris, but when he moved to the Carlton Hotel in London. The English restaurant scene was almost non-existent since the aristocracy had stayed in place and kept employing the great chefs in the private houses. Escoffier changed all of that and was the first person to ever offer an a la carte menu in Britain. The world wars limited the growth of dining in the first half of the 20th century, but from the 60s onward, there'd been no looking back. And most traditional chef's training is still based around Escoffier's cooking manual, Le Guide Culinaire. Despite all Escoffier's help, the restaurant business is still very hard. Around a quarter of new restaurants fail in the first year and about 60% fail within three. 